It'll get your life back to normal. Lonnie with Restore It, Restore It, Restore It, Restoration. Hey, Service Guys listeners, this is uh, producer Ruel. How's it going? Just wanted to let you know. Time to time, we're going to find ourselves in a situation where Lonnie and I are just too dang busy to connect and record another podcast. So we've made a decision to, you know, now that we've done the podcast enough to to, to say we have some sort of a, an archive <laughs> and it's not uncommon in the podcasting world for for uh, for a show to sort of republish uh, an older episode um, from the archive, just to keep, just to I mean, in all honesty, just to sort of keep your subscription sort of alive, because a lot of you four or five listeners have chosen to subscribe to this podcast, and uh, you know. We wouldn't want that to go to waste, so by allowing us, or by us making a decision to publish something from the archives, you know, you'll get some sort of notification that an episode was published. So yeah, so that's what we'll do, and that's what's going to come up, and you know, it's a grab bag of what it will be. It may be a guest episode, or may may not be a guest episode, um, but it'll be good. Because everything that comes from this podcast is good. And so be it. Let it be known. It is good. <laughs> Lonnie's is not here. So I get to say whatever I want. And I am the producer. But, you know, Lonnie is such a really forgiving guy. If I say something out of line, he'll let me know via text. You know, he'll send out, he'll send out the, uh, the service guys, hitmen, to sort of set me straight. <laughs> so, yeah. So speaking of Lonnie... Don't forget, you know, Lonnie isn't just our resident service expert. You know, he's got he's got a lot to say, and he, he's really, really in the know. And um, you know, you could check out more of what he does at restore dash it dash restoration dot com. And you know, he's on Facebook, and you know. Hit him up, you know, let him know. Hey, man, I follow you on the podcast, and I, now I'm following you, and I'm stalking you on Facebook. Can you tell me more about mold and mildew? Can you tell me what is the difference between the two? Because I'm dying to know. Or you can let him know, hey, you know what? I ain't 80 years old, but... I'm kind of like that 25-year-old, and I had a really, really enjoyable, as far as I can recollect, evening with some buddies and some partying. And I woke up on my carpet floor, carpeted floor, and I, it's not clear to me whether or not the vomit that's in front of my face is mine or somebody that I don't know. Can you help me with that? So yeah, let him know. Let him know, hey, what the situation is. And then he, you know, if he's got the time, he may sort of like decide to let you know right then and there. Or he might say, hey, that's an interesting topic. We can talk about it in a future episode of the podcast. Be sure to subscribe. <laughs> and with that, here's our throwback. Did you see my... Uh picture i sent you a little bit ago yeah 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 I, and i was going to ask about it i was going to I, I wondered if it was always is if it, is it always mold that accumulates in those things by the time you change it or is it just dust or a combination or or can you uh, that's, a, that's a combination was that it, it, that's a combination yeah i saw it and um i had recently changed mine so i was like hmm wonder if i had yeah <clears throat> What that is, we learned years ago, the old, the old method of mold remediation was very laborious and tedious. And uh, somebody much smarter than me figured out that, uh, well, once you, once you do the demolition, tear out everything that needs to be torn out, you take a, an electric leaf blower and just blow out all the crevices and all the old cobwebs that you hadn't seen under the drywall and and just get all the original framing construction crap out of the way and 
um, put it on the floor. Basically, we just take a leaf blower and and blow the living crap out of every crevice, and it's amazing what you got. Uh, I got two 30 gallon trash bags full of just dust and mold and dirt and filth and original construction. And, and, uh, yeah, you just do that for the bulk mold removal. And then now we're down to the tedious. Now we're back to vacuuming the old method. They, they teach you to go in and you have to vacuum everything and, and then you wipe everything and you have to vacuum everything again. Well, when you're getting chunks of like wood from the, the boreholes of the electrician, you know, boring through a, a floor joist, yeah. you know, you get all those original construction debris and man, we would just have to, you know, it would clog the vacuums and stuff like that. And then somebody, I don't, I don't know why it took somebody smart to figure it out. You'd think it'd be obvious, but it's like, huh? Yeah. Just blow it out and get, get the big crud out of the way. And now, now we're down to the microscopic, vacuuming and cleaning so I always change the filter after we you know after we get down to the point where we're now down to doing the hepa vacuuming then we're not creating dust we're just picking up mold particles and <clears throat> containing it in our vacuum while we're under negative pressure and then um yeah then we're wiping down well i just got done wiping down everything and and um yeah back to vacuuming i'll be working every day this weekend work is good yeah i like kind of sitting on my on my rear though oh oh is it working now hey mark it is Ooh. how you doing oh, mark God, stupid bloody machine <laughs> what happened oh dude I, I i so i hit join the thing and it goes oh you need the app I go, okay so i download the app that's fine download the app i go okay so i hear ruel oh, i can hear lonnie and then it's, um, so I want to say good morning. So I go, speak. And um, it says tap to speak. And I go, okay. So I tap that and it says, oh, you, you need to allow it to record. And I go, okay, so record. Oh, you need to turn this off. What? <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. So I'm, I managed to finally sort this little miserable life out and I can talk to you. So I, I have actually heard and been following what's going on. So good morning. Good morning, Mark. It's a uh, Saturday in your world, isn't it? It surely is. Saturday breakfast time, even better. Yeah, bacon and eggs with some coffee. Pretty much so. Bacon, bacon in the omelet with cheese and um, and coffee. Mm. Well, look, and, and I am really, really, really mm, I'm I'm really really sad because on Thursday night a tragedy that is. Look, I'm not sure if I can speak about it. And not not get all emotional, so I may uh, you you may lose me. My coffee grinder broke. Oh. oh no! So so this is the last cup of my ground coffee till my new coffee grinder arrives. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, Mark, I want to get to New Zealand one of these days just to see you. Oh, that'd be cool. And and, and then while I'm there, just so you know, I'm gonna steal the Beecham street sign. Hmm. That's about 10 minutes down the road from where I live. Cool. So if and I ever the, get there, I'm going to create international controversy and, <laughs> and uh, you know, get the UN on both of our cases. Mm-hmm. That'll be the one. We'll live up two of them. So that's, that's fine. Cool. Well, folks that are tuning into the podcast, since uh, Ruel doesn't know how to segue, I'm going to try to segue into this. Uh, you have three friends. That yeah, have met before you start. Via, you hear any of the the noise that I have going on? I have like a gardener doing stuff. I heard a tank, but you know what? People that are podcast people, they they understand. Cool. Um, okay, but yeah, cool. friends, we, you got three. You got three international friends in three time zones and two continents, and um, one is upside down. So he's a, he's in the future, but he will never give me. His, the 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 winning lottery ticket numbers. I I, don't, I thought we were friends, but we we're not allowed to give that information out. When you're hiring someone to clean your carpets, you're probably assuming that they're using better equipment and better cleaning solutions than you would. 
Unfortunately, this is not always the case. Their equipment should heat the water to 200 degrees to ensure that your carpets are not only clean, but disinfected. Next time you hire someone to clean your carpet or tile, ask them how hot their water gets. If they don't know or it's less than 200 degrees, send them back and call me, Lonnie Beecham, with Restore It Restoration. I'll get your carpets done right and your life back to normal. Uh, must be in your uh, New Zealand uh, citizenship card or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you got you got Lonnie Beecham here in Jeff City, Missouri. I'm in Central Time Zone. You have Ruel Abadam on Pacific Coast, and he's in the Northern California area. And then we have Mark Thompson from uh, all the way down under in New Zealand. And I have no idea what time it is in your world, other than it's breakfast time Saturday morning. We're recording Friday, July 25th in the afternoon in in our world. So in my how you doing, Mark? In, oh, I'm good. I'm excellent. Thank you. Look, in my world, it is 0724 on Saturday, the 28th of whatever the month is, July. July. Every yep. day is the same whenever you're a, when you're a grown up, isn't it? Yeah. Unless you're a teacher that gets summers off. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is the middle of winter. This is the middle of work season. And um, at the moment, we're having uh, New Zealand winter. So our seasons are the opposite to you guys. So. Ours is, ours is um, we're winter at the moment, but some um, rather wet. So, Mark, before we do the the full introduction and, and and the prescripted crap that Ruel emailed me that, you know, he says I have to say or whatever, I got to ask you one question. I've never asked you this, but is it okay. true your toilet goes the opposite direction as, as ours when you flush it? Dude, don't be silly. The toilets go down. Um, I, I, I know, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about the water in the sink. Yes, yes. Ours, ours spins the opposite way. Gotcha. Okay. All right. <laughs> but no, our, our toilets go go down, and our sinks spin the opposite way. So your toilet just goes straight down? Uh, no, it's a it's a different different flushing system. So um, our one, you imagine, so the water in our um, bowls is a lot lower than what it is in the states. And so our water doesn't swirl down. It just relies on the heat of pressure from the water coming in the top to flush everything through. Um, but if we had a system like the US does, yes, ours would swirl the opposite direction. Well, hey, you know what? Before that, and that's why we have you on this call. It's not just three friends chatting. Uh, let me, let me, I'm going to read a script to you, Mark, and yep. uh, we're, got, we're going to do a formal introduction. So uh, here we go. Here's my reading skills. Welcome to an edition of the Service Guys podcast. I'm your host, Lonnie Beecham, and the service professional that you all know and love. Over the other mic is our podcast producer and and a great friend of mine, Ruel Abadam. Ruel, please say hello, everybody in podcast land. Hello, everybody in podcast land. (laughs) You trying to imitate Mark now? No. You, you kind of sounded like mm-hmm. you were trying to have a New Zealand accent. No, so, no Mark, have, Mark, have you uh, have you had a chance to listen to the two or three podcasts that we've put out? Yeah, I have. They 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 sound, okay. they sound good. Okay, so now that we got the formal introduction out of the way, tell us <laughs> first back up, and then I want to hear more about your toilet flushing, and then I want to hear you know one of your crazy stories from work and stuff, but. Uh, tell us a little bit about who you are, your background, what you do, who you work for, um, that sort of thing. Okay, so I started my original working career um, in, in the Defence Force. Uh, I wanted to work with aircraft, so um, I became uh, an aircraft finisher and spent a lot of time uh, stripping paint, actually. So, yes, I was a male stripper in the Air Force. Um, Wait, Mark, about, hey? did you say paint stripping? Paint stripping, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that sounds, so we use sounds tedious. Paint. Sorry, what was that, money? I said that sounds tedious, stripping paint. Uh, yeah, it was. The nice thing was, though, that everyone would leave you alone, so I got to spend plenty of time working on my own listening to the radio. It was very pleasant. Um, but um, to be perfectly honest, while I really enjoyed the painting, I didn't like the chemicals, so I got out of that, went overseas for a couple of years, um, and then came back to New Zealand and retrained as a civil engineer. Um, so I, ah. I, don't, I don't have a degree. I have a certificate. So I'm a technical, um, sort of technical end guy. Um, so straight after my last exam in 99, 
uh, I started working for a company called AWT. Now, they were a water company, um, and I got dropped straight into the rather interesting world of sewer rehabilitation. Um, and so for the past 20 years, what is it, 80, 18, so 19 years at the end of this year, I've been working in sewer rehabilitation uh, and uh, with pipes. And uh, so with storm, so, so I work with the three waters, potable water, um, storm water, and sewage. Uh, okay. Sort of my, my job is a, is, is, is a mixture of um, watching people do work on site, so doing quality control, making sure they're doing it safely, making sure they're doing the job right um, out on site, and the other half is uh, sort of an, analysing the work to be done uh, on videos, that sort of thing. Um, I'm involved in training of CCTV operators, so how to, how to take the pictures, how to do the work, how to give the um, information in a sensible manner. Uh, I do a lot of assessment on pipes. So uh, councils will come to me and say, hey, we, we think our pipes are stuffed. Tell me you have a look and I'll, and I'll give them a, go, go through, give them a grading and say, hey, look, this one, you need to do some work right now. This one, you need to do some work in about five years or this one, hey, it's got 20 years life and it, don't bother. Um, so I do that. The last week, excuse me, I have just spent um, a week of about four of them wandering around a little settlement in the north end of um, New Zealand called Hikarangi. Uh, and Hikarangi in New Zealand is a fairly old place. It would be close to 100 years old, some of the properties. Um, and they have a problem with... Oh, wow. Into their, into their, yeah, it's like 100 years old. Anything over 100 years in New Zealand is ancient. Um, we're mm. a really young people. Um, so spent, spent um, uh, the week inspecting 200 of uh, about 600 properties, uh, looking at their external drainage features and grading those, going, yep, in a rainstorm, that's going to get water in it, or no, that's a piece of art, it's beautiful, leave it alone. So that's that's sort of sort of what I do. Um, I'm really interested in clean water. I'm interested in keeping stormwater out of the sewer, and I'm interested in keeping sewer out of everything else except for the sewer. Um, and I so, Mark, cycle, can I, on long walks can I interrupt you? Mark, can I interrupt you real fast? Yep. What's the problem with putting stormwater in the sewage system? Okay, so quickly, it depends on the design. Some sewer systems are designed to take stormwater and wastewater at the same time. In that case, it's not a problem. The majority of them are designed to take wastewater or stormwater, not both. So with stormwater... As soon as it gets into the sewer, it's contaminated. Got to treat it as sewer. So you imagine, um, say, somebody has one of their house downpipes discharging into the sewer. That's the equivalent of somebody flushing the chain on their toilet every 10 seconds or so in a more reasonable rain shower, right? So now all of a sudden, you imagine that over an entire city, you overcharge your sewer system and you get sewer overflows. So... Ah. You wander down to your nice, pristine beach that's in beautiful condition, and contrary to popular belief, they are not sea cucumbers on the beach. Those are grogans and turds. So you end up with... Bro shit on what? Your... Say that again and slow. Gro grogans and turds. Huh. I so, have no idea what either one of those are. So to put, to put it in layman's terms, shit on your beach. Okay. That I, uh, I understand. That, that you understand. Or uh, if you're a private property owner, your private pro your sewage may over a surcharge as well, and it will come out your gully trap if you're lucky. If not, they will have to meet you to come and clean it up. Gotcha. And that's why you and I are kind of connecting. Because that's exactly right. you, you deal with the more, from my understanding, more of the underground buried lines, right? That, that's right, yeah. Okay. And then in my world, oh, you've gone. Yeah, he dropped. Oh, Lonnie. Okay. Hey, Ruel. How are you? I'm good. Um, um, all right. He's back. I'm here. He's back. Well, well, we'll pretend he's not back, and I'll just interject because, you know, I'm the producer here. So I, I have a responsibility to read some sort of formal definition of a Grogan, and this is from the Legitimate Urban Dictionary. A Grogan yep. is partially ejected clump of feces, half a loaf, also an ejected clump of feces that is not 
heavy enough to drop off your dingleberry forest. There you go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there we go. Grogan. Yep, yep, yep. Grogan. Okay. So, so I, what I was saying uh, when I, where I lost you is I totally track what you're saying once, um, you know, like so storm water hits sewer pipes, it's treated and considered sewage and contaminated. We all know what that means. Uh, yeah. Same, same in my world, whenever even something, even when water that's clear, that doesn't stink, that doesn't have toilet paper, in my world, we call it brown trout. That's also known as feces or sewage or whatever. Uh, even though any, any water that comes up through your floor drain, be it in the garage or the, or the shower or where have you, it's, that water is still considered treated the same as sewage. Yep, most definitely. Because of, uh, you know, even though it might not stink, it might not have any odor, might not have any look, might not have anything that looks harmful, it is treated as harmful because of all the E. coli and uh, all the bloodborne pathogens and 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 those sort of things. You, you, I'm assuming you understand bloodborne pathogen, right? Bloodborne pathogen. I would call that things like hepatitis C, tetanus, right? A, it, uh, just yep. yeah. It's it's a whole lot of nasty stuff that right. you don't want in your house or anywhere else, actually, except for in the sewer. So your job is to keep it out of the house, and my job is to sanitize it to the point where it's safe for kids and families to walk around in if it gets back backed up into your house, right? Yep, exactly. Gotcha. All right. So you're above, you're below ground, I'm above ground, right? Yeah, that's right. All right. All right. So just, just trying to clarify for listeners, make sure everyone understands. But So go, so go ahead. I, I interrupted you. I'm so sorry. That's okay. I'm trying to remember where I was. Um, so um, the and the other problem. So I'm just talking about. So we call that inflow when when stormwater gets where it shouldn't. The other problem is the majority of the sewer systems um, around the world operate on gravity, right? So everything flows downhill until it gets to a really low point. Then they pump it back up again. So all of a sudden, your pumps are working. So you pay money to move the sewer, the sewage, right? Right, because you've got to run the pumps. Um, when I when I started on my on my work, the area I was working was called Devonport in Auckland, and there are six pump stations between Devonport and the main um, treatment area. So that's six times you now need to pump this contaminated stormwater. So that costs you however many dollars in electricity. Then your sewer plant is designed to um, receive sewage from say, let's say a hundred thousand houses. When it's raining like that and they're all leaking and contributing, all of a sudden you've got the sewage coming in from 200,000 houses. What do you think happens? Oh, wow. To you? So you, you, and then you've got a couple of options. You can um, stop the inflow getting in there. You can make your pipes bigger and create storage, or you can build storage in the system so that your um, big flow gets stored and then comes out at a slower rate that the sewer plant can handle it, or you can build a bigger sewer plant. As you can tell, all of those are really expensive options. So generally, people will go for what they call rehabilitation, where they will fix the pipes and fix the inflow problems, um, and because that's that gives you generally more bang for your buck than paying, oh, I don't know, $20, 30000000 million to upgrade your sewer plant. And Mark? Yeah. Mark, can I, can I interrupt you one more time? Yep. You're you're talking twenty million dollars and uh for our listeners that didn't catch on, you're in New Zealand. How does the American dollar and the New Zealand dollar kinda track? I mean, are they close to the same? No, I think I think we get uh, ours is worth less than yours. I think uh you would get about a dollar fifty for your American dollar. So Okay. Um, yeah, if, if I sorry, if I was to buy an American dollar, it would cost me a dollar fifty of my money. Okay. Okay. So 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 okay. you you guys you guys come over here and stuff's cheap. Right. 
Okay. All right. So, sorry, back to your story. So either 20 million to build a new plant or, you know, more bang for your buck to keep the, the inflow from coming into the system, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so for 20 million, so for the same amount of money spent on sewer rehabilitation, you could rehabilitate. Um, I'm just trying to think what I've signed off. That's, I mean, that's around about eight or 10 years worth of uh, physical works. That's a, no, that's a lot of meters. Um, let me see. A small town would probably have uh, 10 miles worth of uh, wastewater system. And oh, wow. you, would easily, you would easily get that rehabilitated for less than 20 minutes. So to give you an idea, gotcha. the city of Auckland has uh, 80,000... 80,000, sorry, eight. Oh. It's a really big number of kilometers. So um, I'm just trying to think. What have we got? 80,000 kilometers of pipe, which is about. And guys, while Mark is doing that, on that, the math on the, the money part, uh, according to Google, a million dollars of New Zealand uh, dough is uh, 679,581 in US. Yeah, that'd be right. Oh wow! So, so okay. to give you to, to to give you an idea, the average house price in Auckland, where I live, is a million dollars. So, if you want to come over here and buy a three bedroom house, it would cost you six hundred thousand US. Oh wow, that's pretty high, even by my mid mid uh, midwestern standards. I, I know. I've been looking at some of the prices in the States and going, screw this, I'm moving there. I can't, I can't buy in your one. Mark was trying to be your neighbor. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could come and live somewhere. Oh, I don't know. Where is, where is there somewhere in the States that it's always warm and doesn't have storms? Um, it's the area between my scrotum and my thigh. What's the real estate like? Yeah. <laughs> It's still pretty humid, though. I'll have to get yeah. an appraiser. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've I've decided I don't do cold. Is just forget that. So, uh, all right. So, Mark, I I would love to have like a twelve hour podcast with you. What is cold to you down under? What What does that mean? And you're going to tell me. Never mind. I won't know what parent or uh, Celsius means. No, that that's okay. So cold. We're uh, in Auckland where I am. We're subtropical. So what it means is we get the occasional frost. So I could count the number of frosts on my hand for a year. Um, but the temperature, so it's cold enough, it's cold and wet. So it is cold enough to be unpleasant, not cold enough to do anything with. So we don't get snow, we get the occasional frost. It's probably very similar, uh, Ruel, to San Fran or maybe Seattle. In its river. So no snow, occasional frost. And so that that means you 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 can go outside and run or bike or whatever in just some warm gear. You're not looking at sub zero freezing temperatures. That's yep yep that's right. So I can be I can be out. The the, the weather is um, wind wind rain mud um, and and damp in um, in, in winter. In the in the summer, it's uh, humid and dry. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa! Humid and dry—that's a Nazi moron. What what does that so, mean? Right. So so it's it's humid and doesn't rain. So when I say when I say <laughs> when I say dry, I mean not raining. <laughs> okay. So Mark, so, let me geek on you just a minute. Do you, you probably do not track um, with psychrometrics and the uh, and and you know, grains per pound and stuff like that in, in the water world, do you? You're, you're talking about flowing water, right? Yeah. I, you're I not don't, talking I don't, about water vapors and vapor pressures and, 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 and the science side of the gaseous forms of water, right? No, no. I'm, I'm solely concerned with the, the liquid flowing form. Liquid. Okay. All right. Now, for uh, 20 million New Zealand dollars. Do you know what the term sublimation means? Sorry, sub, sub sublimation. sublimation. 
Yes. To, to, I, I do. I do in terms of um, something. So you will get something like dry ice that goes from a solid to a exactly. gas. Exactly. Ding, 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 ding. Checks in the mail. Boom. <laughs> Nicely done. I, I was yeah. just seeing if you paid attention in uh, physical science class. That, I, and that's I, something that, that, that I deal with. I will blast homes for certain needs with dry ice. And, right. uh, yeah. and it, and it oh, supplements. Yeah. Yeah. goes from a solid to, to, a, a, to a gas immediately, like dry yeah. ice. And that's actually what I use is dry ice to uh, blast homes for mold remediation, uh, fire damage. Kind of depends on the, the application, but that's very pricey. So, so, so right. will that, will that do, do things like remove um, um, smoke, odor, sort of surface damage without damaging wood or paint? Uh, well, it takes a top surface layer off. So like, yep. um, well, all right. So it kind of depends. Like in my, my old days when I did fire damage, we would dry ice blast in, in an attic in July or August because we would die <laughs> if we were <laughs> up there soda blast, you know, baking soda blasting or hand cleaning stuff. We, we could, uh, you know, when it's negative, what? negative 120 degrees we would literally suit up with like warm sub you know and we would still be freezing in the middle of august and my august july and august uh mark i don't know how to translate this to um to celsius but uh you know we, we we're between 90 to 110 degrees outside so, with, so that's, uh, that's 40 60 degrees to, uh, what's that around 40 degrees celsius that's what that's what we call stupid hot well right and and then then in the midwest we have the humidity factor so we can be 60 to 95 percent humidity outside and so you mix all that and and guys can literally work in in the attic cleaning or fire soot removal or whatever we're doing for about maybe maybe 10 minutes because in, yeah. in our attics, we're at 150, 180 degrees, it's and hot. it's just as humid, and it's hot. Yes. So, hot. and it's then, great if you're in a lady, but bad if you're in the jungle. Exactly. So, <laughs> so we would we would use dry ice in, in uh, certain situations if if uh, it wasn't practical to uh, go in and clean clean all the trusses and all you know the the. the the reframing stuff, we, we would go in and dry ice blast and then we would have a product that just left or just soot, whatever was left. And, uh, we wouldn't have to clean up soot and baking soda and, you know, whatever other chemicals we might've used. So anyway, so that sounds like some very cool technology. I used to use, um, what was called a plastic media blaster. So like a, it would be very similar to your dry ice blaster. Uh, except it uses plastic media for for removing for paint stripping, um, and that was dusty as it was a fantastic system. But if you didn't want dust on anything, forget it. You know, exactly. You know what people don't realize, and I we probably need to find a media blaster person. But there are there are so many different media blasting: I mean, walnut shells, corn cob husk, uh, yeah. baking soda, dry ice, glass, sand. I mean, there's just tons of different ways to blast and they all have their, their, their use. Yeah. They all yeah. have, you know, it's a tool in the arsenal. So, but anyway, we got sidetracked. I, I, I now owe you 20 million New Zealand dollars. <laughs> it, it made total sense to me, guys, all of that, you know, all that. Uh... <laughs> this is, this is us. This is, this is the bit where you smile and nod a lot, Ruel. Because you speak computers and I sort of glaze over. I go, ah, yeah, okay. I smile and nod a lot. <laughs> Very cool. Where's so, Lonnie gone? So, Mark. Lonnie. Yeah. Um, so, we've learned a little, a little bit about New Zealand, your dollar, your weather. You deal with uh, both potable storm water and sewage water. That's right. Um. And I and I've cut you off a time or two, but um, so the premise of our show is kind of getting service guys that that are behind the scenes that you may or may not see. 
you tend to be more of a guy people don't see. Um, people, people can tell when you're not doing your job, when the water's coming up through their floor drain or, um, you know, the trucks are out in the street and you're pumping and, and sucking sewage out of places that doesn't belong. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you've been doing this 18, 19 years. How, what, what's, what's one of the craziest, unbelievable, you can't believe somebody asked you this question, you know, asked you to do this or, or what, what's, what, what's a crazy story in your world? What, what, what's that look like for you? So I, I deal with a lot of lining companies. So one of the, there's a few ways you can fix the pipe. You can put a new pipe in, you can, um, and, and there's, lot, there's lots of different techniques. Our, our company specializes in being knowledgeable what's, about what's called trenchless technology. So trenchless technology doesn't mean you don't dig holes. What it means is that you do the work with only small holes. So it's really laparoscopic surgery on the sewers. Um, nice, ways to nice. Do. Yeah, it's very good. Um, I can install a pipe under, ref, fix a, a pipe underneath the house without digging up anything. Just all access. You could now. Do you call your the, the hole that you get into to access the drainage, do you call them manholes or access shafts? What do you call those? Uh, our, we, we call them manholes, and they're in the middle of our street. So every house kind of points towards the middle of the okay. road. Okay. So uh, uh, there wasn't enough thought put into our sewer designs, and the sewers may be in the middle of the road. They may be in the back of a property. Um, they are all over the show. Uh, well, now but, in our in our world, Mark, Mark, yeah, in, in our world, if the if the <coughs> excuse me, if the um, if the sewer lines go towards the back of the house, that's more of a, a lagoon system with grinder pumps and uh, and that sort of thing. If they go in the back, and that's in the more uh, you know remote area, not remote, uh, rural area. Yeah. Yeah. So, but if, so you're, if you're in city limits, you're on a city sewer. If you're yeah. basically out in the country, you're you're on a lagoon, and you're you know the, what do they say? You know, you know everything rolls everything rolls downhill. Yeah, and that's and that's actually a lot of the reason for it in New Zealand. We're a very um, or well, certainly Auckland. It's a very hilly place, and you know a lot of houses are down below the road. So um, th- th- that's why the sewers are there. But um, so we deal with a lot of lining systems, um, and one of them is called cured in place pipe or CIPP. And what that is is a uh, flexible pipe. So you imagine a tube of fiberglass that gets um, put in your your uh, sewer and inflated. And there's a couple of different ways you can cure it. Um, and they will do uh, four inch pipes up to the biggest one I've seen installed was. Uh, 1,200, which is, um, uh, what's a yard, 36 inches? Uh, a yard is, yeah, thir- yeah, you're, you're okay. correct. So, so, so you You understand seconds. our world better than we understand your world. Uh-huh. That's yeah. pathetic. You know, the working on aircraft bit, we, we worked in um, Imperial measures on the aircraft, so I got to learn those. So, so that's that's a. I've, I've seen one done in a 36 inch pipe, and they do a bit bigger. They'll do up to 42, maybe 50 inches. Um, but there's a, there's a there's a couple of ways of curing them. Um, and we had uh, recently we had a a company uh, come in with uh, a UV cure system. So you know you go to the dentist and he puts the stuff on your teeth and he shines a little light in there. That's a UV. Right, right. Cure. And so they use exactly the same system for this liner. So what they do is they pull the, pull the liner into place, they inflate it with some air, and then they have this big, long snake of UV lights that trundles off down. Okay, cool, pretty simple. It's really quick, really efficient. So this company comes in. We've worked with them on um, other projects, but this is the first time they've installed this system for us. Um, so, I'm, so I'm there because it's the first UV liner I've seen installed. The principles are all the same for CIPP, so I'm sitting there watching it. And uh, so they're away. They put the liner in place, and there's a few dodgy things they do that I'm sitting there going, talk to them about that. Um, so this is 
this is the when you watch people work, you get to observe them pretty well, and you get to know um, whether someone's really familiar with what they're doing or whether they are floundering a bit. Now, these guys were moving heavy stuff. They were sticking their hands in places they shouldn't, like in front of pinch points. They were trying to manhandle this piece of pipe that weighed, uh, let's see, 200 pounds a meter. Um, and I'm just sitting there going, oh, wow. Hang on. This just, okay, the signs of, the, the, you know, it, yes, you're getting the job done, but there's a couple of things I'm going to talk to you about afterwards. So anyway, they get the liner in place, they cut the ends off, and what they have to do to get the pressure inside it is install some metal inserts either end of the liner. So a guy's down in their manhole installing the first liner, and all of a sudden I hear the voices going, hey, hey, stop, oi, oi, oi. When you're working on a site like that, that's always a bad sign. So I'm sitting there going, right, okay. Right, right. No matter what way. language you speak. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, actually, I work with a lot of guys from the Middle East, and you can, you can, yeah, it doesn't matter if I can't understand what they're going. I know what's happening. Um, right. The guy comes out, and he goes, we've lost the liner. And I'm going, now normally when someone with COPP says they've lost the liner, what it means is um, that it's, it's cracked or it's split or it's become contaminated or for whatever reason um, they can't cure it and, or, or the curing is only partial. And I said, what do you mean lost the liner? He says, I've, it's gone. I go, what do you mean gone? He said, oh, no. Gone. Yeah. The whole, so this thing was um, 750 mil. Uh, this was about, ooh, uh, hang on. It is about 24 inch, a 24 inch line. Uh, and it was 80 meters long, which is close to 80 yards. Um, the whole oh, wow. line. So what had happened is a plug upstream had gone, released a whole lot of uh, water down the pipe, and had washed the entire liner out down past the downstream manhole. So when he said lost the liner, what he means is it's flowed off down the stormwater line out of the two manholes. And I'm going, well, where is it? I don't know. Well, go find it. Um, so this is, is, is a liner. And it's worth oh, most of my year's wage. <laughs> right, and, right. And this thing has just disappeared down the pipe. Uh, okay, can you go get it? So, <laughs> yes, yes, they, they found it a couple of man, manholes down, but um, they've had to get a new one special from Germany. Let's just say they lost their profit on that job. Yeah, no kidding. So, so what what ended up happening? Did it flood somebody's basement? What 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 happened? No, we're still, no, no nothing. The, 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 we, as far as overall effect, we got off pretty lightly. They have to buy a new liner and redo it. Um, so that's that's cost them a pretty penny and hasn't really given them a lot of um, credibility in the industry, which is it was a little sad for them. But uh, they, they're learning this game and. Um, it's a really Ooh. special, you know, it takes it takes you 10 years to learn how to do it. Um, so there's not many companies that do it. Um, and they're new to the business? Yeah, they're new to the lining, relatively new to the lining business. Um, they've got, Ooh. it's a case of as a company, they've got the ability, but they really need to get some good runs on the board before they'll be taken, you know, uh, a lot more seriously by the industry. Um, and, and stuff like this, they, they got off pretty lightly. They were able to recover the liner. There was no – so the liner is full of um, – has a lot of styrene in it, which is uh, a really nasty contaminant you don't want in your stormwater. They managed right. to recover the contaminating stormwater, um, which was, was great. We have a lot of um, native fish in New Zealand that uh, the council loves and is very sensitive about, and, and rightly so. And the styrene will kill them off pretty quick. So, you know, they, they got away. They, they dodged a bullet, but it's going to cost them plenty. Um, wow. And it's totally fine that you're talking about this on a podcast, right? Yeah, I've, I've not mentioned any names to protect the um, <coughs> guilty. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, public, it's public knowledge what, what happened in the industry. Um, they've, they've certainly received the information back from uh, other parties that they hadn't spoken to. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's well known. Um, I... I'm, I've generally so so most of my most of my work stories 
that that I that I shake my head stories involve people doing dumb stuff uh, regarding <laughs> health. Um, yeah, you know, people. I, so I, I I do a lot of health and safety checks, and people say, oh, you know, you shouldn't you shouldn't let someone someone know you're doing a health and safety check. Just you know, stand behind and watch them. I go, no, no, people will do dumb stuff when you are standing straight in front of them. You know, they they will right. jump down in holes without any protection. They will get in excavations that are too deep. Um, and they will do it while like, you are standing there straight in front of you. You don't need to be sneaky and sneak around. Um, yeah, right. You can uh, only imagine what they do when nobody's looking, though. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, if you will do that when I'm standing here. And for me in my job, if I see somebody compromising health and safety, I know for a fact that they are going to be pretty average on quality at best. And my other uh, if, if yeah, their quality is average, their health and safety is going to be pretty poor as well. Wow. Yeah. All right. So yes. what kind of what kind of tip? I know we're on two different ends of the world, but what, what kind of tip can you leave our listeners with regarding either potable for for the dummies, that means drinkable water. Yep. Uh storm water. Or the uh, sewage water. What 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 kind of tip can you leave us? Maintain your drains. Now, and how does what that look like? Okay, what does that look like? So, your drainage, your plumbing and drainage is generally out of sight, out of mind. The only right. time you know there's a problem is if there's an overflow. And I guarantee that most people have got no idea where their drainage pipes go, have no idea what they're made of, and have no idea what they're um, what you know? How operable they are. Um, I tell, I, I get people telling me that fat blocks sewers, and my answer to that is bullshit. Does not. Roots get into the sewer and collect the fat and allow it to block, or dips in your sewer allow the fat to congeal and allow it to block. But if your pipe, your sewer pipes are running correctly, the fat won't block it. So get in. Clear the roots out. If you've got dips in the pipe, get someone in to dig them up and fix them. If you've got old leaky pipes, I recommend you replace them. Um, oh, by the way, fat will block a gully trap and it will block a U, a U pipe under a sink. So don't put fat down the drains either. Um, so main, maintain your drains. The problem with it is that, to be honest, it's going to cost you... Let's say you replace your entire drainage system. It'll probably cost you five to ten thousand US dollars, depending on, um, on on what you do. But hey, you only need to do that once every fifty years. And to be perfectly honest, they should last a hundred years with modern materials. The problem is drains aren't sexy. No one ever comes to your house and goes, "Wow, check out that plumbing. Whoa, I like your drainage." Unless they're really sad people like me when I'm commenting on people's gully trap when I'm walking around houses. Um, maintain your drains. You, I know you can't see them. You don't, you don't get anything back for them. No, you're not going to improve the value on your house. But, hey, uh, and the other problem is if you maintain your drains, you may not get to meet Lonnie. So you can edit that out if you really want, Lonnie, because this is really going to – if people maintain their drains, this is going to stop you doing work. But, hey – just like people do dumb stuff while I'm standing there in front of them, people won't maintain their drains either. So I think you're pretty safe. Excellent. Um, just got a word that <clears throat> you might have lost Lonnie again. So uh, he's going to try to finish him. Back on. Uh, Hello? Hey, Lonnie. What, what just happened? Um, <laughs> it must have been a, a call bump. Oh, there it goes again. Um, lovely. Yeah. Okay. So, so Ruel, maintain your drains. You know, just like just like you go and get a health check, maintain your drains. So, hey, since I got an expert civil engineer on the line, what's your thought on, uh, uh, in my world, we call it uh, Drano. It's, it's a basically, uh, chemically, it's mostly lye. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not going to do a thing on the sewer. It's not going to touch it. Um, Drano is fantastic for uh, unblocking sort of plumbing drainage, probably mostly in the U bends. Um, once it's in the sewer, so gravity sewers run 
a little bit full. They don't run full full. So if you've got a blockage, it's not going to do not going to do a thing. To clear a blockage, if it's a root blockage, you need to get a jetter in there or a cutter to cut them out. If it's a fat blockage, you need to get a high pressure water jetter in there. Um, and it's it's specialist equipment and it's specialist work. Uh, right. But yeah, chemi- chemicals dumped down the line. You can put root killer down there. Really doesn't do much. You can foam them. Doesn't do much. They'll be back. Um, right. Drano, they laugh at Drano. They go, ha, 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 ha. this is nothing. I, I do too. If I know if a customer tells me they use a lot of Drano, then I, I know that it's uh, going to eat the pipes like a cancer from the inside out, and they will have a massive sewer line problem down the road. I don't know if it's going to happen this year or 10 years from now. Well, especially if you've got if you've got concrete pipes, acid eats concrete pipes. Guess what Drano is? Oh, hang exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, it's bad on it's bad on. Oh, uh, wait, 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 wait. No, it's, it's caustic, not acid. Yeah, I was going to say yeah, it's it's mostly al- alkalinic. It's like alkaline, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, no, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. No, that's going to that's going to ruin plastic, but it's not going to touch pl- uh, ceramic or cement. And and it also ruins uh cast iron and um yep, yep. it'll it'll I chew cast remember. iron out like there's no tomorrow. Mhm. Yep, and you can see it. And I've seen a lot of customers in their basements that they, they have exposed sewage lines and in, in an unfinished portion and they'll say, What is that? And they start wanting to touch it. I'm like, No, 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 don't touch it. Don't touch it. Get it cut yeah. out and replaced. Yep. So yep. so that's like the place you had the other day where the sewer was underneath the um plastic. That was you, mm. you were telling me that cast iron. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know we had a little glitch with technology, and hopefully uh, the producer, Ruel, can splice this all together. But I, I think this might be a pretty decent show. I think it's fantastic. Oh, thank you, Ruel. And, yeah. and, and just so uh, my local listeners know, when you, whenever you see me in the wintertime wearing a bright orange beanie cap that has my blue lettering stenciled in or uh, embroidered into it, Mark. Thompson's wife actually hand knits my my beanies uh, for me to wear and keep keep my ears warm and my bald head warm. So um, it only yep. takes a month just for anybody to know. Mark, uh, if you want to plug your wife, um, you know, if if anybody wants some hand hand knitted virgin New Zealand wool, um, they can go to Mark's wife's website and they'll do it. She'll do it for them. But uh, just so you know, it takes. What was it? A month last time that it, I, I, was I know most stuck. most most of that's the most of that's the shipping. The pigeon was flying really slow. Um, yeah, I was like, I wasn't, I wasn't nervous or scared, but I, I, well, I was, I wasn't scared, but I was a little nervous. I'm like, uh, where's this at? <laughs> you know, it was like four to six <laughs> weeks or something. <laughs> so, if if people want to have a look at um, the beautiful things she does, and and her knitting is art. Um, have a look at Not Moira. That's K N O T, and then new word M O I R A on Facebook. There's and um, there you go. Two years. Uh, apparently, there's been nothing put up for two years. She's she's she needs to give me some more photos, and I'll I'll put them up. So it's it's a it's it's me that'll be talking to you mainly on the on the page. But um, yeah, so Not Moira, if you if you're keen, and and yes, we we do do custom beanies and stuff like that. Right. And, and as a as a Midwestern boy, I can tell you that I have paid Mark online uh, a few times for a few beanies. And and um, yeah, it works. It works flawlessly, especially if the mail can keep up. Yeah, that's right. So most most things actually don't normally take a month. I was a bit appalled at that. <laughs> normally, right. 10, 10 is good for getting a package over there. Well, folks, my day is starting to. I need to. I need to switch gears and actually go back to work a little bit. Okay, Mark, it's it's awesome catching up with you and and talking, learning more about your day to day professional life. And I'm glad that the, the company was the, was able to retrieve that liner before it flooded somebody's home and blocked up something that didn't need to be blocked up. Yeah, exactly. Would you like to? Would you like to have uh, the last word? Um, I'm not quite too sure what to say. If anyone's interested in a little bit more of what I do, have a look at 
www.projectmax, all one word, projectmax.co.nz. Um, and you may even see my pretty smiley face there. I'm the one with the curly mustache and no hair. And uh, for people that don't know Mark and what he looks like, I guarantee you once you see him, you, you could pick him out of a lineup immediately. Bald head, smooth, smooth bald head, and a handlebar mustache that is always on point. Actually, my girls are telling me the, the terminology is fleek now. Is what, sorry? Fleek. You're on fleek, Mark. On fleek. Oh, there we go. I'm up, with, I'm up with the kids. I'm on fleek. On fleek. Right, yes. okay. So whatever you do, Mark, I, I, I know your uh, background and, and stuff, but whatever you do, do, do not cre- – uh, do not um, – how do I say this? Do not do a heinous crime because you're going to be picked out of the lineup immediately. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, yep. I'm just, I'm just too noticeable. <laughs> Imagine me in a bright orange minivan. Everybody yeah. sees me. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. All right, um, Lonnie. Before we start to really get towards the wrap up, um, mention again because you mentioned your for your local customers what. Uh, what your business is and what, what you specialize in real quick? Uh, this is Lonnie Beecham, the owner of Restore It Restoration. And you can find me on Facebook and Twitter and I think Instagram now. Yep. My website is restore-it-restoration.com. You're hired. And uh, yeah, Ruel really didn't get fired last time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was disturbed about that. <laughs> he knew I was joking. So, uh, it, and what I deal, what I specialize in, are is everything that's uh, water related, be it uh, cleaning carpet, cleaning ceramic tile, mold remediation, and I uh, rise and shine at, at water damage restoration and mold prevention. So, that's Fantastic. that's what I do. Um, sort of the. The, the little small touch points uh, that I took away from this episode was uh, the term the term Grogan and uh, something that I haven't heard in a while, brown trout. Yeah, Mark, that's the only thing we got out of this. <laughs> was Grogan. Yeah, excellent. Grogan. That's everything else. We can just delete it all. Just throw Grogan out there, and we're good. Yep. That, that, yep. That's just me. That was just me. Anyways, it's putting um, the world on podcast at a time. <laughs> So if uh, the listeners find val- found value in the Service Guys podcast, please share it with people you know. We would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts, rate us, review us, and also leave comments. We would love to see your comments, and we'd read it on the show. Service Guys podcast is online on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as Service Guys Pod. And, um, and as we outro... Yeah, and... and- Five star reviews are are critical. I don't care if you say I don't ever want to go to New Zealand or I don't understand a word that Mark Thompson just said. Just leave us a five star review. That's right, because five stars are the best. Yeah, we're Americans, Mark. We don't we don't mess around with three or four stars. It's five. Five stars. Yep. On on behalf of our our special international and first guest, Mark Thompson. <laughs> Thank you, in New Zealand, I want to thank Ruel for uh, putting this together and recording everything. I want to thank Mark Thompson for taking time out of his morning breakfast on Saturday. Uh, I guess it's July 26th your, in your world. And um, thank you guys for listening. Let us know what you think and leave a five-star review. He's Lonnie Beecham from Restored Restoration, Jefferson City, Missouri. And he likes to say, get your life back to normal. They'll get your life back to normal. Lonnie with Restore It, Restore It, Restore It Restoration. This has been another Coffee with Heavy Cream production.